So it says identify the error and fix the answer. So they said x minus three divided by x plus one is less than or equal to zero. They said the solution was three. The domain restrictions were x cannot equal negative one. And the answer was from negative three to four. So they've got a solution at x equals three. Yes, I did. Okay, so they got a solution at x equals three. They also have this negative one, that's a vertical asymptote, right? Okay, when they plugged in negative three, it did not work and that's a true, that's, that's true. It worked for when we plugged in zero and it did not work when we plugged in four, right? Yeah, go ahead. Do you have, no, do you have? I don't, but you know about the next. Okay, so we see that it works between these two numbers. So if we want to write out the answer, what would it look like? If we wanted to write out the answer for this stuff to work, what would it will what would it look like? Be Not greater than negative three. Greater than negative one. Greater than negative one and less than three. What they said down here at the bottom was that negative three to four all work. That's what they're saying. And that's not true, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and oh, Lena's. let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. I don't expect you to write all these words down. Write only the important part. Okay. So we have school t-shirts that charges $35 to set up their printing machine and they charge $4.25 to print a shirt. Write those things down really quick. So, ready? Okay, we're gonna create an equation to represent the average cost per t-shirt if the t-shirts are printed by this business. If we did not print any shirts, we just set up the mess, how much would that cost us? $35. So we got C of X equals 35 plus for every t-shirt, it's going to cost us $4.25 to make them, right? And they want us to figure out per t-shirt. So we're going to divide by X. Okay, this always throws people off. But what's up top would calculate all of what's going on with those t-shirts. What's in the bottom that's saying, divide it by this many t-shirts so that we could get the actual per t-shirt cost. So for instance, if I take 25 t-shirts and I plug it into here, I'm gonna get 35 times 4.25 times 25, and that's gonna give me 141.60. And we wanna figure out how much it's gonna cost for one t-shirt. So we're gonna take that and divide it by 25. And so that's going to give us, somebody's going to help me with this because I don't remember this answer. 141, 141.60. 425 times 25 plus 35. Oh, okay. My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. If we divide by 25, we're going to get $5.65. Okay, if we plug in 100, we're going to get 35 plus 4.25 times 100 divided by 100. Yeah. And so that's going to give me $4.60. Okay. How many shirts must they print in order to make the cost per shirt be $5 or less? We want to know when that happens at the first instance. So we had our equation. Okay, so this is just from the previous slide. Okay, and we want to know when it's $5 or less. Okay, so we want to go 4.25x plus 35 divided by x, and we're going to say that's less than $5. 
and it wants to be equal to or less. So now we can cross multiply and solve this out. Okay, so just like what we did yesterday, cross multiply, and that's gonna give us 5x equals 4.25 plus 35. We're gonna subtract the 4.25 from both sides. 4.25x. And that's gonna give us 0.75x equals 35. When we take 35 and we divide it by 0 0.75, that's gonna give me 46.6, but we can't have half a shirt. So we're gonna say about 47. I know, thanks. So let me ask this question. What's gonna be the cheapest cost per t-shirt that this will get? What's gonna be the cheapest cost per t-shirt that this will get? Yeah, why is it going to be 425? Yeah. You can't have less than, than, than the cost per shirt. Can't have less than the cost per shirt. Oh, is that going to make a problem? Yes. This is to just zero out. For if, like, if I charged everybody 425, probably wouldn't make a whole lot of profit. Right. So you make $5, make right. Said, what if we did this? Okay, so she's wanting to sell it for $10, right? Okay, um, and each one costs $3.50. Okay, so if we do 10 minus 3.50, that gives us $6.50, right? We know that she's gonna spend $200. The one thing I can't understand is, is this $3.50 being pulled from that $200 or is she just spending $200 and then the $3.50 is outside of that? That's the one thing I can't really distinguish in here. Um, but if you did $200 plus $6.50 and then divide by X and you want it to be at least $4 in profit, this is the equation that we would use, okay? Let's see if this works. Let's see if this like will give us something worthwhile. Let's multiply. And so that's gonna give me 200 plus 650 X is equal to four X. If we subtract, that's gonna give us negative 2.50 X, 1.50. Nope, 2.50, that's right. Okay, is equal to 200. And then if we take 200 and we divide it by, Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Where do we get the two point? Where do we get the two point? Four minus six point five. Right? Because we have to solve. So this would be x equals 80. So he would have to sell 80 in order to make a $4 profit. So let's make sure that that makes sense. If we had each one being sold at $10 a piece, okay? Again, I don't know the answer to this one. This one gave us a problem last time. So if you have another idea, let me know. We have 80 times, 100, uh, times 10. Okay, that would give us $800. And then we wanna take out this $200 expense, right? That would give us 600. And then each one is $3.50 to make. That would be $3.50 times, we have 80 of them, right? So that would be minus 280. So we got 600 minus 280, that would give us 320. And 320 divided by 80 does give us a $4 profit. So, this is your answer. Wait, wait, wait. Yep. Yep. I'm so confused as to why we're tracking that. Negative I'm tracking Christian is practicing to be the best penalty kicker for this team. He currently has made 24 out of the 30 shots. How many? First of all, how much is 20 out of 24 out of 30? 80 percent. 80 percent. Okay, he's been on a roll and thinks he can make the rest of his shots. Okay, so how many more shots does he need to make in order to get an average of at least 90? Well, we have 24. We're going to add more kicks to it. 
we're going to divide it by 30 plus x because he's adding more kicks to it, right? And we're going to set it equal to 0.9. Now we can cross multiply, right? Okay, so we're going to cross multiply. That's going to give us 0.9 times 30 plus x equals 24 plus x. We're going to distribute. And so that's going to give me 27 plus 0.9x equals 24 plus x. We're going to subtract 24. And so that'll give me 3 plus 0.9x equals 1x. We'll subtract 0.9. And that's going to give us 3 equals 0.1x. Divide by 0.1 on both sides. So x would equal 30. So he would have to make 30 more shots in order to bring up his average from an 80 to a 90. Y'all know how like your GPA works? Like people are always like, don't fail your first semester of high school because trying to bring that back out is really difficult. Yes. What you mean you lost the key? What? We need to make sure that you notice, though, is that this is actually dealing with an inequality, and it says at least 90%. So that means that he can make more than 30, right? Okay. So come back in here. We're going to look at one more. I haven't done this one yet, so we're going to learn together. Go ahead and take a moment, write down any of the important parts, and then let's talk through it. Yeah. So. Joe enters a race. He has to cycle. He has to cycle and run. He cycles a distance of 25 kilometers and then he runs 20 kilometers. His average running speed is half of his average cycling speed. Joe completes a race in less than two and a half hours. What can we say about his average speeds? That's 40 kilometers. <laughs> Okay, so he runs 20, I'm sorry, he cycles 25, he runs 20, and his running speed is half of his average cycling speed, right? Okay, so his running is half of his cycling. He completes the race in less than two and a half hours. What can we say about his average speed? So what will we do about this one? Thoughts? No idea? So on this one, what can we say about his average speeds? We're trying to know how fast he's going. So he's covering kilometers, but we don't know how much time he's taking, right? And right. like, I mean, we know how much he has had in total, but we don't know how much time he spent cycling versus running, right? Okay, so we have his running speed, I'm sorry, his cycling speed plus his running speed. And we want it less than 2.5, right? Does that make sense? The only thing that's throwing me off is this one half. That's a little weird. What's your thought? Okay, that's a thought. Let's try it. Okay, so now these are the same then. So we got to multiply by two over here in the top and the bottom. So that would give us 50 plus 20 divided by 2x is less than 2.5. So this is going to give us 70 divided by 2x. And let's say that we solve for it. So 2 times 2.5 is going to give me 5x. If I divide by 5 on both sides, 
That's going to give me 12. So he went 12 kilometers per hour. So I multiplied this times this, and that gives me that 5x. Yeah, I don't know what I wrote here. Yes. Solving rational equations. I multiplied this. So I got x equals 12. That doesn't sound right, though. 